they're not just a problem to solve. Yeah. They're a person to know and to love. Mm. And if you just try to solve the problem based upon the one first answer they say, you, you've made a lot of assumptions, you've made a lot of things, and you've probably not actually got to know the heart of your student. Right, Welcome to the Couch Time Podcast, where we give you tools to connect with your kids and point them to Jesus. I'm Aaron. And I'm Stephen Petrie. And today, we are, um, we are going to be talking about some difficult subjects. The chapter in this book we've been going over this summer, Engaging Your Teen's World. Um, chapter 13. Chapter 13, all about depression, uh, about self-harm, about anxiety, about suicide, some really tough stuff. But... Um, Yeah, so we're going to get into it, and I think the best way to approach it is to first off say that this book is not exhaustive on the topics, and there's all kinds of resources that we've got either at the church or online. Um, But this is a chapter that attaches the subject of depression, anxiety, self-harm, suicide to the content that we've been talking about in this whole book, which is – how would would you sum up as far as – Yeah, I guess like the whole book so far, like we've talked about a lot, has just been – How do you connect with the heart of your student in the culture and time that they're living in and going through experiences that they're having that are different than yours? How do you connect through conversation, experience, time together in a way that shows your student that you love them, but more importantly, shows your student the gospel of Jesus Christ? And this chapter about depression, anxiety, suicide, self-harm, like you're saying, is not exhaustive. It doesn't cover everything by any means because there's tons of books just written and essays and PhDs and all sorts of stuff written on those um, ideas. But more so, hopefully, this chapter or this podcast, as we're not going to exhaustively hit on any of these topics, we've done some podcasts on them in the past, but we'll hopefully open your eyes and your hearts a little bit to give you more of a hunger and a desire to check on your kid and make sure they're okay and connect with them, love them either before they get into a struggling state and and loving them and talking to them, keeping an ongoing conversation, or while your student is in a really hard emotional, mental place mm-hmm. to make sure that they know that you love them, that they you care about them, that you want um, to have conversation with them and that they're known and loved by their creator, that they have an identity as a person made in the image of God. So. Yeah. Yeah, so we've been going over this book through the summer and – um, I I really love this book because it hits on what you know we've talked about it many times. Whether you love books, whether you just you know you don't or not, you like reading or not, you know the content of this book. The over the overarching point is in the Bible. This is the same thing, and Jesus modeled this: is it's people's hearts that matter, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. And it's like watch your heart with all diligence, because from it flow the springs of life. It's like our heart is the epicenter of who we are, right. what we think, what we do, what we say, you know, what we're about, our values, what we believe, our faith. And it's like yeah. that's what God cares about. That's what makes humans different than other mammals and creatures is God has given us a, a soul. And you know, this book is all about encouraging anybody who's working with teens to go after teens' hearts. Yeah. Because so much of the teen world is is a facade. Like they don't know what's going on in their own heart. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, how it looks on the outside versus what's actually going mm-hmm. on. There's often a divide and disconnect. Yeah. And as we talk about depression, anxiety, suicide, self-harm, you know, these are words that probably all make parents, youth leaders, anyone who loves kids, like take a big deep breath and like makes you swallow pretty hard. And yep. it's like – it's scary and hard to talk about. And if you have a middle school or high school student, I'm sure, you know, these are already um, ideas and words that, you know, bring about fear and worry and, and all these things. And, and if they, if they don't, and if you're like, Oh no, my kids are great and they would never have any, have to deal with that. They're perfect. Yeah. Like I did encourage you to just kind of take some time and think through how, common these things really are in youth culture right now and even if your kid doesn't struggle or experience any of these 
issues, they're going to know people that, mm-hmm. that are. Oh, for sure. And they're going to read about and see things and hear things from people that are. And whether it's their own heart or the heart of their friend that they're hearing, that's a weight that they're, that they're going to be carrying, either the weight of their own life or the weight of other people's as it gets kind of put onto them. Mm-hmm. And it's important things to talk about. So, I mean, even in, you know, just from our own experiences, even in our student ministries, you know, we have multi- multiple kids um, and students that struggle with self-harm. We have lots of kids that have um, extreme depression, anxiety. Um, I've, I, you know, I've known people that have committed suicide. Um, I've, you know, had students that have been close to people that have committed suicide. I've had conversations with kids who, um, want to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Um, just today I had a conversation with someone who was talking about a point in their life where, you know, one of my students where every day they, they wish that they weren't alive anymore. So like, it's, it's a very common thing that students are dealing with and talking about, and it's very sobering and hopefully, you know, this, this kind of gives some context on how to, how to yeah. love and talk about. So, yeah. So essentially what we're going to do, you know, we're wrapping the book up uh, as far as the discussion. So the first half of this book is kind of like, you know, the, the premise of, and, and the, the why behind, you know, translating culture, understanding your kid, how to connect to their heart. And then the second half is all about these topical things about, Mm -hmm. you know, areas where to apply it that are some hot topic issues. And this is definitely one. And one of the sections in this chapter, Stephen, you're already talking about it, is, you know, they mention it's like how serious should you take depression, Mm. anxiety, you know, self-harm, suicide. They're all kind of often clumped together. But just because somebody's struggling with depression or you know, anxiety doesn't necessarily mean we need to freak out. But um, I would say, Steve, let me ask you this question. Um, Middle school and high school students, if you had to guess how many of your students, I have two questions. The ones that you know of that are struggling with depression Mm -hmm. or anxiety uh, or even the extreme of you know suicidal thoughts or mm-hmm. self harm. How many of them look like they are struggling with those things? If you didn't know them and you just, um, yeah, probably the minority. Yeah, probably the minority would actually look look like they're struggling and dealing with those things. Some are very open about it. Most are not, which you know obviously makes sense that you're mm-hmm. not because it's an internal battle. It's an internal. You know, lots of times, whoever, you know, if you're struggling with mental illness and anxiety and those types of things, like, you don't even quite understand yeah, sure. what all is going on in your heart, what all is going on in your mind, much less able to communicate it to another person mm-hmm. in a way that they would understand. So, like, one of the reasons it's not talked about are kids kind of hide it, cover it up, don't deal with it, try to just be normal around friends or in social settings is because they don't even – understand how to communicate it to themselves, Mm -hmm. let alone to another person, Mm -hmm. which is why it's so isolating, why it's so complicated is because it causes students to kind of draw back from other people because they don't know how to talk about it. They don't know how Mm -hmm. to deal with it. They don't know if anyone would want to listen or want to care. Often kids um, or people, parents, youth leaders, we want to try to fix a kid's problem in one conversation. And kids probably feel that experience that too. So then when they leave a, maybe they do open up about it and they talk about it. And when they leave that conversation tomorrow, when the problem's still not fixed, they feel bad to go talk about it again and again and again, because they're like, people don't want to keep hearing about how bad I'm doing and what mm-hmm. I'm struggling with. So then after they maybe talk about it a couple of times, then they just hold it all in and they try to just experience it on their own, which only makes matters worse. So yeah. a lot of times kids get very good at hiding it, not for the purpose of hiding it, but for the purpose of they don't even know how to explain it or yeah. they're scared that people will be annoyed and not want to talk about well, it. Well, you know, or or Christians, you know, if, you, if you've if you got – you're trying to raise kids to fear the Lord and it, it might be sin. Like it might be struggles with specific sin that they don't know how to talk about, but mm-hmm. they know it's wrong. So then they don't want to talk about it because they know it's wrong and the fact that they're struggling with it makes them feel ashamed and they don't know what to do with that. I mean there's so many internal – you know, variables. Yeah. So 
point being for my question is a lot of the people that we know are struggling with depression or anxiety who are coming to me and talking to me who feel you know safe to do that you know thank the lord we've got a friendship we can do that they look like they're fine Mm -hmm. like they have a ton of people in their lives that have no idea they're struggling some Mm -hmm. do and some kids are open like that and other kids you know they're not so the point is the facade we can't always go off of it's the fact that we have relationships with them and we're in the known yeah. talking with them. Second question is, how many of your students, you know, would you say or guess are struggling with depression and anxiety? And it's mm-hmm. like, we just have no clue. Yeah. You know, depression and anxiety, probably the majority are have have experiences of mm-hmm. depression or anxiety. It may not be a crippling thing every day sure. for them. Um, but I'd say the vast majority of students deal with loads of anxiety, which then can take a part of those students and take them to a depressive state, which then takes people into a self-harm state and then to a yeah. suicide state. Um, it's not always a, if your kid's struggling with yeah. anxiety or depression, you don't need like, oh, we don't want to commit suicide. It's right. Like, it's like, yeah. And we don't mean to say this lightly or whatever, but they're not always. And if you go that, next, yeah, yeah, sometimes that they may not want to talk about because they're going to think that people, yeah. oh, they're going to think I'm suicidal when in actuality, they're just yeah. really anxious and struggling. Yeah, it is it is such a a big deal to talk about because what we need, what teens need, what adults need who struggle with depression and anxiety is a safe place, meaning safe people to mm-hmm. talk to about it who will remind them of what truth is. Yeah, and I guess my, my question I think would be good to talk about is how can parents kind of find out or talk with their kid to know if they're struggling or mm-hmm. if they're like hurting? Like, yeah. Um, because I think parents want to know how their kid is doing, obviously. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's kind of hard to find out how their kid's actually doing. Sidebar if your kid ever lets us know that they're struggling with self-harm or suicide, we, we will, will tell you. We will absolutely um, let you know. So I know we're talking um, about this thing. It's like, it's not like, oh my gosh, does Aaron and Steven know my kid is struggling and they haven't? We no. will always tell you. Our, if you're... our first priority is to help keep your kids safe. So if yeah. your kids are in our student ministry, we we don't mess around with suicide, with yeah. self-harm, even depression. If there's assessment, you know, our discernment, God's given us to know students. And it's like, if it's, you know... Um, if it's a big deal, we absolutely reach out yeah. to you. And But for, for parents, how can they even begin to find out and love their kid and get their kid to open up with them about what's going on there? Yeah, that's that's a good question. And we kind of just jump right into the content of this, you know, this episode. Sorry. So no, no, we're we're good as far as um, just anybody listening. Sorry, we jumped right in, you know, kind of attaching this subject to the rest of the book. You know, uh, I want to talk about to finish, Stephen, your question is is excellent, um, but then next steps for it. parents, even if they don't have a kid, you know, it's like just being aware of this subject and helping your teens be good influences and friends to others because they are going to know people and see people and hear conversations about this sort of thing. So, um, what was the question you just asked? Well, it was that it was how. How can parents have conversations yeah. with their kids around this topic yeah. to either see how their kid is doing? And if their kid's doing fine, it still lets their kid know That's, that they love and care yeah. about them. So <laughs> don't corner your kid be like, are you okay? No, really, are you okay? You know, it, it takes – if you are doing what this book talks about, which is having an ongoing conversation with your kids and you know where they're at and you can tell when something's off – you know, those are the times when you utilize and tap into the relational capital that you've built up over this one conversation that you've been having mm-hmm. and ask. And, and hopefully you've earned the, the trust and, you know, you have the ability not to, to force your kids, to be honest with you, but to lovingly like they know you care about them. That's the goal. So if if you're not there with your kid you need to start investing to try to get there. Now, yeah. if your kid is in danger, like they're, you know, they're suicidal or they're, you know, harming themselves and you discover that they are, you know, I think God is gracious and he uses all things. It's like, you need to start now investing in that conversation with your kids to, mm-hmm. to, to tell them that you love them and that you're there for them and you want to help them. That's another conversation that we would love to have. But as far as starting the conversation, you know, 
it's it's really hard. I've got a list here from Axis. I'm just gonna read. This is their packet. You know, try try starting with one or more of these conversation openers. Um, and as I read these, it's really hard to ask good questions. But these are all open ended, and then. If your kids know that you care, you ask, and then you listen to what they say. So Yeah. Well, on that, let me say one thing on that yeah, yeah. note. Asking questions, I think, is one of the biggest things in any, like, conversation that lets someone know that you love them mm-hmm. is asking questions. And as a, as a parent, as a youth leader, we ask a question, we hear something that a student says, and we so quickly – want to tell them the truth, mm-hmm. want to tell them what's true about them, want to like tell them how they're thinking wrongly or that's not true, what they're going through is like, we so quickly want to do that. And you have to like, stop, let them say untrue things. Let them say, um, just, just let them go. Let and them listen. say things that aren't accurate or aren't biblical and ask another question and then ask another question and then ask another question. And eventually through asking questions, a good person asking questions can guide someone's thinking and heart based upon the questions mm-hmm. you ask. And then towards the end, you can then share some things. But I'd say that one of the most important things is to hold yourself back. So that I takes literally, a lot of discipline. I, say, I literally just got, got off the phone with a student and mm-hmm. I asked this student probably 50 questions in our phone call before I ever said anything. All I, and I would just listen. And then I'd say, oh, interesting. Like, why do you think that? Or, oh, why, why is that the way you feel? Is that, you think, oh, is that, is that how you should feel? Or what, what's hard about that? Or, and you just, you keep asking, you keep asking, because that allows the student to start to share more and more of what's actually going on. Because no one shares everything after the first question, because they don't know if you actually care yet. And slowly well, does, it's like unpacking a, Unpacking does, someone's heart. It does two things. It communicates to them that you care mm-hmm. because it shows that you're listening. If I ask a question and, you know, the first thing to do to shut down the relationship is to show that you weren't listening to their answer to it. Mm-hmm. But if you were listening to the answer and you ask another question that builds on that, it's like, oh, oh. And then you get yeah. somebody talking and actually, you know, being transparent, you know, that's that's really hard and it takes time to do. But And it allows um, you – you, later, you have a better understanding of what actually is going on. It gives it, you more. It allows picture. you later when you come to a point where you're like, okay, I think I can now share some things. It allows you, like you're saying, to have a much fuller picture, a better understanding of maybe some of the roots of why they're feeling this way, to then now speak more directly than if you talked at the first second question. You may say something that really had nothing to do with what's I'm, going on because you made a joke. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed right now to say I won't give the details, but I've I've done this a number of times and it's humiliating. But you know, say in in adult community group, you know, uh, leading a discussion and somebody starts to ask a question, you know, and there's a pause or whatever reason, or I clarify something, but then I go off, kind of just responding to based on what they said, and then when I'm done, they're like, "Well, what I was gonna say was this." It's like. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even finish listening before I just started talking. And it's yeah. like, that's not, I mean, that's not good. That's not, I don't think what Christ did. If he did, it's because he knew what they were thinking and he could yeah. speak to it. But Because it's like, your, your student isn't, they're not just a problem to solve. Yeah. They're a person to know and to love. Mm. And if you just try to solve the problem based upon the one first answer they say, you, you've made a lot of assumptions, you've made a lot of things, and you've probably not actually got to know the heart of your student and just love them. And that's, Stephen, that, we should write that down. That's exactly what this whole book and stuff has been about. It's great. All right, here's these list of questions that, that might be good. And we can list these in the show notes or we'll just list this entire, this uh, parent guide. You know, try starting with one or more of the following conversation opener. So it's, you know, tell me more about what is happening to you. I'm here to listen, but then actually listen. You know, how are you feeling? Have you felt like this before? So these are like if they're struggling, you know, if you're if you're seeing them off, you know, I'm worried about you. It looks like you're going through a difficult time. Mm. It's like if you just say that, it's like you see them. You see that they're. And this is what they'll probably say. No, I'm good. And you say, really? Like what's going on? Mm -hmm. You've seen things have been going bad. It's like, well, (laughs) it's like you have to be careful. Yeah. I care. I want to listen and understand. What do you want me to know about the way you feel and what's going on? 
can you talk to me about what you're experiencing? Do you feel like you want to talk to someone else about this? Who might that be? That's a great one because I know a lot of teenagers, they don't even want to talk to <laughs> There's one conversation I had with a student. I could tell he was off at youth group and – you know, he's he's a key kid and, you know, an upperclassman. I just said, hey, man, you know, you doing okay? He's like, yeah, I'm okay. I said, no, really, would you would you tell me if you weren't? He's like, well, I said, how you doing? He said, well, you want to you wanna go for a walk and talk? I said, sure. And it was very unusual. This guy doesn't talk a yeah. lot, but it's like, I, you know, for whatever reason, it's like he is, he is off. Something's going on. We talked for like 30 minutes and we got nowhere. Mm. And he was like, well, what if, what if, you know, there's a situation, I can't give you any details, but it's really bad and I don't know what to do. It's like, <laughs> okay, well, what can you tell me about the situation? I just asked questions and at the end of it, I just straight up told him, it was like, you know, unless, unless you're ready to talk about it, you know, it's like, I'll pray for you. Um, I'm happy to talk whenever you're ready. And there was a couple of times he's like, well, I'm not ready to share that information yet. And uh, and I couldn't get anywhere with the questions, but then I said, it's like, well, do you have anybody else that mm. you, you'd be willing to talk to about this? He's like, yeah, there's one person he told me. And it was another student that they had, that they went to school with. And it's like, you know, that was all, it's like, well, you need somebody <laughs> that, that mm -hmm. has truth that's maybe more mature. Maybe, I, again, yeah. I still don't know the information because I followed up and apparently it resolved itself. So I don't know what it was about, but, um, Maybe it was drama. Maybe it was something bigger. He was. It was. It was rocking his world. So whatever it was to him, it was a big deal. Sure, but, yeah. You know, he mentioned it was insightful to me to know. It's like, oh, there's another student. You're not so isolated. You're not. You're not just not talking about this with anybody. Um, how can I help you feel better? What else can I help you with? You know, who or what helps you deal with this? You know, whatever you're struggling with. Who else do you know that has experienced these issues? How can I help you find more help? Do you ever have thoughts of harming yourself? It's like just asking that question can feel really awkward, but it's really good. You yeah, just this, this is like one of my biggest advices for people. If you know that your student is struggling with depression, anxiety, it is completely okay to say, have you ever thought about harming yourself? Mm -hmm. I, it, it is so scary and it's a very common thing they talk about in suicide prevention is asking that question and it's so awkward and i think parents youth leaders are scared that if you say that you may give a kid the idea or your kid may think that you're like mm -hmm. like that oh my gosh like do they think i'm like crazy and i'm yeah. like i have asked that question probably probably 30 times to different people maybe maybe more Never once has a kid responded or a friend, kids my age, or an adult, never once has anyone responded in a in a bad way. Mm -hmm. They've either said, uh, no, actually, I haven't. Or they've said, yeah, I, I do a lot. Um, and then you say, the next question is, have you ever, have you ever harmed yourself? Yeah. Or if people say they're suicidal. How, have you ever thought about how you how you would do it? Mm -hmm. That's another very scary question to ask somebody. It's also a very important question. It's it's a very if someone very important if someone question. says that that they are suicidal that they or let's say that they're cutting. So have you have you ever thought about how you would kill yourself? And whew, man, that like that question will take the wind out of you when mm -hmm. when you're asking that to one of your own kids. And that gets into that gets into again. There's a lot of resources out there, but as far as don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have mm -hmm. concerns. We would love to point you. We're not experts. We've experienced it, so we can tell you things that we've done. But it's a really, really big deal um, yeah. to try to care for people who are struggling, who have considered how they would or are preparing to like. And finding that information out can be scary, but that can be life saving. Yeah, and it can be. It can be huge. And self self harm is such a common thing. Way more in, common than in than youth culture right now. Way more common than parents would would that believe. your kid won't be freaked out by the idea of you asking them. Yeah, that's because a good point. because it's a conversation that they're having with other people and that people mm -hmm. are telling them. And so it's not such an obscure thing, most likely to your student, as obscure as it feels to you. So yeah. if your kid's really struggling to ask them that, is a really good way to like know where they're at with how they're doing mentally and. Mm -hmm. 
And if they just say, no, actually, I haven't, you can, most of the time, you, they're being honest. Like, you can tell, like, when you actually ask yeah. someone if they're, they're being yeah. honest. So I'd really encourage you that if they're, your student's struggling to ask that question because it'll help you know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So asking good questions, and there's a few as far as the uncomfortable talking about, you know, if your kid's struggling, there's, you know, panic attacks or depression, you know, that mm -hmm. they're struggling with or stress. Like, there can be, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, you did, Stephen, like the internal, you know, uh, in this book, I was looking for a specific quote. Um, you know, we're trying to shepherd their hearts and parents. It's like God's design is for you to raise your kids. And part of that is shepherding their heart. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to process everything going in their heart. So it's like it's your responsibility to try to figure out so you can help guide them yeah. to know what to do with it. And it's like the Bible says we're to catch our thoughts. Yeah. You were to, we're supposed to put off stuff that's not true and put on stuff that is true. And it's yeah. like people who don't have anybody, they don't know how to do that themselves and they don't have anybody who helps them know how to do that. It's like they're just left to wonder yeah. and to, I just got all this stuff and I don't know what's true. I don't know what's not. What do I do with it? It's like, I don't know. It's like, yeah. that's a, that's heavy. That's burdensome. I, I'm in seasons like that sometimes yep. and I'm grateful for people like you, friends that know me that can ask or other people that, it's like, here's, here's what you're struggling with. And it's like, mm. oh, somebody sees me and knows me. Like, that's so encouraging. And then they say, here's what you should be doing. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, my goodness. That is so helpful. Teens need that. Yeah. Um, and I would say, uh, you know, one of, the, one of my favorite quotes from this book so far uh, it's right at the beginning. It's from a guy named Jesus Christ. So that's a pretty cool guy. Um, but right in, right in the beginning of the chapter, it says, take courage. I have overcome the world. And this, so far in this podcast, we've talked a lot about what's going on in culture, what's going on in student culture, conversations that they're having, people that they know. Um, I'm sure your students know of someone probably that's either self-harming or has committed suicide or they're, they're struggling or maybe, maybe they're isolated from people and they're, they're not having those conversations yet, but they will at some point when either that's when they leave your home or they go off another place mm -hmm. as life, as they grow older, they're going to experience these conversations. So it's never too early to start prepping their yeah. heart. But for, but for us, it can be very scary to hear about all the things that are probably going on around of our, around our student and the idea of take courage. I have overcome the world hmm. is like so encouraging in the context of this whole conversation that while these things seem so big and terrifying and horrifying, and in some ways they are terrifying, there's a lot of promises in God's word of who he is and the God that knows them and loves them more than you do or more than we do. And the God that sees them and actually knows what's going on in their heart and actually knows what's going on in their mind. Yeah and created them in his image. And we as youth leaders, you all as parents and your student as well can take courage knowing that Jesus has overcome the world and that, you know, it makes, it makes sense in a lot of ways that people are anxious and people oh, are depressed sure. and people don't want to live. And I mean, if you like, see the brokenness in the world uh, and people who don't know Christ and it's like, this is all that they're like they're trying to live their best life now. That's because that's and, what they think you, it's about. Like made, you can't. And, you've, and you have people at school that are saying things, or maybe you've made a decision that you regret, and it's mm -hmm. affecting how people see you in your life, and you don't want to experience it anymore. Like it makes sense how people get to a place like that. And the only hope that we have for that is that Jesus overcame the world, mm -hmm. and that He redeems broken things, and He reconciles broken relationships and hurts, and He mm -hmm. takes broken hearts and can provide healing and. You know, we talk about at Grace a lot. I remember it was in one of our our like onboarding booklet that uh, transformation is really slow. Yeah. And this idea of sanctification is really slow as well, a little slower than we want it to be. And people's problems often take longer to resolve than we want them to be. So I'd encourage parents with that as well is that like your student isn't going to change most likely like this yeah. with a major issue like yeah. anxiety, depression, self-harm, suicide. It's not going to be something that's over in one conversation. It's not going to be something that may be over in one year. Mm -hmm. It may be something they deal with for the rest of their, their lives. Yeah. Um, but we can still take courage yeah. in Jesus Christ. And you can still today continue to have conversations, get to know their heart. And every conversation you have, 
hopefully is a building block mm-hmm. of your love and care for them. And that's, sometimes you yeah. may knock down what you built, but that's, and you have to build it back up. And that's, that is what, you know, the best thing that we could do is encourage parents and anybody working with teens or volunteers, us, like that's what we need to do. And it's easy for me to forget that, you know, when a student comes to me and it's the end of the night, end of an event, and they're like, hey, can we talk? And it's like, oh, it's the last thing I want to do right now. Mm-hmm. I want to go home. I want to rest. You know, I just, you know, just really pushed myself, you know, at this event, whatever it was we were doing. It's like, that's why I'm doing mm-hmm. this, though. Of course I can talk. Like, and parents, you know, I'm not where you are if you're listening, you have teens, but my kids, you know, my oldest is going to be eight this year. They're like, daddy, 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 all the time. And it's like, stop needing me for stuff. Like, it's selflessness. It's yeah. what's neat. Like, I care about them. And it's like, if I'm not, like, why do I have kids? God's given them to me to raise them. Hmm. You know, don't be selfish. Um, that's what we have to not be as selfish and busyness I think is one of the things that gets in the way of that so everything you're saying you know if you're too busy to where you don't have time to have this conversation and to build you need to rearrange your life and make some time to talk with your teens uh, to find out what's going on and and to start building yeah and if you're and if you're discouraged because you desire to do all these things and you're trying mm. and your kid just still doesn't open up to you or doesn't talk to you. Um, it can be easy also to kind of be like, okay, I've, I've tried, tried all done, that yeah. and beat yourself up and feel like I'm doing something wrong and read another book and read another book or watch another YouTube video. And again, at the end of the day, like people aren't just problems that if we push the right buttons, it just fixes them. And you may not just need another technique in order to love and reach your kid. And you're just going to need perseverance and courage. Mm. And this idea of like, you know, the things we're saying doesn't promise that because you asked the question that this booklet said, that your kid's going to answer in a way that's open or because you asked. For sure. So like all my encouragement to you parents (laughs) is find your, your own hope and your own peace and your own contentment in Christ even if your kid's not opening it up to you. And cause that's going to be an identity struggle within your own heart. Oh, for sure. And you're going to have to keep remembering for your own self, the gospel and pray for and love your kid. Yeah. Even when they're not showing any sort of love you or can't, encouragement. Back. You can't, you can't share something you don't have. And yeah. it's like, if you don't have the peace of Christ, if you don't have the joy of the Lord, if you don't have the hope that Jesus has overcome the world, it's like, you're not going to be able to extend that. Yeah. You know, you can point to other people who do have that, but no, that's, that's the best place to end. So to wrap up, as far as this conversation, we should, we could talk about it more. This was, this was a little bit of a, you know, we just jumped right into it, but this is a topic that, you know, whether you, ha- your kids struggle with depression, anxiety, you know, or self-harm or even suicidal thoughts. Mm. Uh, this is a topic that you need to be aware of and you need to be aware of because you need to see your kids and be watching, you know, to see, you know, to keep track of, to keep safe, but just keeping in touch with them and their heart and where they're at and what they're struggling with and to help them work through stuff, but then also to help coach them on how to, you know, think through this stuff because, you know, suicide is a very real prevalent thing in our culture yeah and they are going to know kids they're going to hear things they're going to witness things and it's it's those are the things that get added up in our hearts as far as what do we do with um so open the conversation talk yeah. about it and, and and don't carry that weight on your own parents like that's it's a heavy weight to bear your kids true. problems along with your problems and uh you know you're going to need also to have your own community that you can call that's true. other parents that you you know, I know parents that have called my parents when their kids are strong. Mm-hmm. It's like my parents call other parents yeah. and you can call us. And so like, don't also just try to bear all the weight with you, your spouse. Um, yeah. You're not alone. Give it uh, on to other people. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. You're not alone. People have been there before. Uh, so again, wrapping up, don't hesitate to reach out to us. If you have any questions mm-hmm. you want to connect uh, or you want more resources, we would love to point you to what we know, what we've used or what other experts who we do know yeah. would say. So Uh, We love you guys. Thank you much. Have a great week. Hey, thanks for watching. You can follow us on Instagram at the Couch Time Podcast. Let us know what you thought about the podcast. Also, let us know if there's any topics or things you'd like us to cover. You can comment and email us at podcast at graceky.org. Please like, subscribe, and share the video with other parents.